Before we learn the nested for loop, let's understand the table. So here, how many rows do I have? Two rows I have. How many columns I have? Around five columns I have. And how the index number starts? For example, with respect to index number, this will start from 0, 1. So 0, 1 are the two rows. And how many columns we have? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This concepts we have covered. Now let's understand if I ask you, print me the value of, print the value 9. So how will you write? Console dot write line. And then you will take the variable name, which is table. And then here the format is you have to write the index number of row and the index number of column. So what is the index number of row? 0, 1. So you will say 1 is the index number of row. And where exactly 9 is present? In which index number? Again, you will start your count for columns. 0, 1, 2, 3. Right? So it is in the, uh, sorry, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So it is in the third position. Now, if I'm going to run this code, what output I would get is 9. Do you see? The 9 has appeared. Okay. So 9 is appearing on my screen. You can see it pretty well. All right. Let me close it. Now, what is the goal here? The goal is using a nested loop, I need to print 1 till 10. During a nested, using a nested loop, I want to print from 1 to 10. So you will use a for loop for this. Let's start using the for loop 4 and i as integer. Instead of i, I would rather say r. r represents your row. Row as integer. You can give a proper variable name equals to. How do you write a loop? You will start your first number from where you would like to start. I would start from 0 because our index number starts from 0. 2. You can manually provide this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So index number should end at uh, sorry, number of rows, right? 1, 2. So the index number should be ending at 1. Clear? So 0 to 1. And then I will loop through the columns. So I'll again write 4 column. I'm representing C as integer. And here I would say 0, 2. How many columns we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1 less. That is 4. 0 to 4. Now I have got two loops. To print it, I'll simply say console dot write line and I'll use the variable table and I have to provide R comma C. Now think on this. What is going to happen? So initially, when the first loop runs, what is the row value? Zero. Then it comes to this line. So again, there is another loop. So what happened? The value of R would remain zero. And the value of C would be keep on changing. So first it will be 0. Then it will become 1, 2, 3, 4. So one loop is completed. Then we'll come back to the parent loop. In the parent loop, the value will become 1. Again, it will come to the child loop. And here again, it will start from 0 to 4. So the R value this time will be 1. And the C will be constantly changing. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that way, if you see, it is going to print all my table values one by one. Okay, so let's save this and run it. So you can see on my screen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 has been printed. Now understand how it works. The understanding is important. When the first loop ran for R as integer 0 to 1, what is the value of R? 0. So 0, comma 0. So that, that value is nothing but 1. Then what happened here? Just focus on this. Just focus what should be the value of R and C. Now the C value will become 1. So 0, 1. That means 2 get printed. Then 0, 3. Then 3 got printed. Like that, it continued till 5. Then after 5, what happened? The loop got completed. Then it will go to the parent loop. 0 to 1. So what is the value of R now? 1. So the next while it is printing, it will become 1, comma 0. So 1, comma 0 means what? 6. 6 got printed. Like that, the loop continues and printed everything. This is the nested loop, concept of the nested loop. Try it out and comment in the comment section of the video. To make it more dynamic, instead of writing 1 here, what I will do, 
I'll replace the one with table dot get length. The previous video we have learned this get length and here I'm going to use a parenthesis because it is row I'll use zero and instead of four writing a, a fixed value I will make it more dynamic instead of hard coding and for columns I'll give it as one even when you write like this and run the code all you have to do when you say get length you have to minus one because the output will become uh, two right so you have to do minus one and here also you have to do minus one that's all now this has become very dynamic now if I run it you can see it got printed let's say I'm going to change the column values also nine so I'm putting some number random numbers and if I run it, so your code can work for anything. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5, 9, it has printed. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, again it has printed 9. So your code is now more dynamic.